Hello folks, Gnomecode here. We're back developing our Teddy game. Now as many of you pointed out, our Teddy is pretty big. Now some of you think he's a bit oversized compared to our own character, but our character isn't actually a very good measure of scale because our character is in fact a baby. And what do babies do? Well, they crawl. So today I'm going to show you how to set up a crawl animation for your game. And of course you can use the same technique to make a crouch animation should you prefer. But if you want to see how I made this, then keep watching. First off, we'll add in a character by selecting Build Rig from the Plugins tab and then choosing a simple R15 model for ourselves, which adds in this cute little guy. Next, we'll bring him to some life with some colour. Yeah, he's looking a bit exposed now. Let's give him some modesty with some clothing. We can add in a shirt and pants objects into the model. Those won't do anything on their own because we need to supply them with a shirt template to use first. So then it's just a case of heading to the catalogue, searching for some clothing. Hmm. So many choices. Which should I pick? Once I've narrowed down the many choices available to me, we can then get him dressed in his PJs. Much better. Now all he needs is an appropriately scared face, and as it happens, Roblox has the perfect thing. So we added this in as a decal, and then we can finish him off and see if we can make him look a bit more baby-faced. So if we select his head and then look at the mesh properties, you'll see the scale is 1.25. We can actually scale this back to 1 <laughs> and see what it looks like, but it's not a great look. So instead, we'll scale it up a bit and try 1.5, which gives a probably better baby type ratio. <laughs> then uh, that's destroyed his neck a bit. So if we add in a 0.2 offset to the head, it then starts to look a bit more normal. Next up, we can use the animation editor to create a crawl animation. By rotating the lower torso, we can move the entire character 90 degrees and set him onto all fours. I always find the most important thing to remember when creating your animation is to start off with the most basic shapes first and then slowly add in more precise rotations and detail as you go and hopefully you'll come out with something that at least somewhat resembles a crawling motion. Now all we have to do is write the script. So we've got our baby here and if we rename it to start a character and then we drag it down to start a player. Then when we play the game, we'll load in as that character. Now in order to trigger the animation, we're gonna need a script of course. So we're gonna go and start a character scripts and add in a local script. And then the first thing we're gonna to need to do is detect when the player presses a key. Now we're gonna use the control key, okay? So in order to pick that up, we're gonna use something called user input service. So create a variable for that. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to get a variable for the character. And so the character in this case is gonna be equal to the parent of this script. Now I know at the minute it might look like this script is contained inside starter character scripts, but all this is is just a container. And so when we actually run the game, if I click play here, you can see if I look inside my model, my character's model, we have this local script that I've just written and it's now inside the character model. So we know character is equal to script.parent and then the humanoid is equal to the character and then we're just gonna call a wait for child method. And so that just means if it hasn't quite loaded yet, then we'll just wait for it to appear. Otherwise this could cause an error potentially. So now we need to do is detect that input. So we're gonna use the user input service, that variable we just used, dot input began, that's an event. And then we're gonna connect it to a function and this takes the input as the parameter new line and we have the end automatically completed for us and what we want to do is we want to check what that input is so we say if input dot key code equals equals because it's a comparison so it's two equals enum dot key code dot left control there we go so you want that control key on the lower left of the keyboard then we want to do our crawl now we need our crawl animation now i've cheated a bit here because i've already got my animation id and i put it inside this animation object 
uh, you could just copy and paste this from your own animation. So we can drag it inside of our script here. We might as well rename the script crawl script so we know what it is. And then we just need to access this animation object, okay? So shall we create a, another variable here? Local crawl anim is going to be equal to the humanoid and then we need to load that animation. So load animation and the animation is script and maybe we should call a wait for child on this as well. Wait for child crawl anim, okay? And then all we have to do is when they press left control, we want to play that animation. So crawl anim, play. So let's go and test that and see what it does. Okay, so when I press control here, we begin crawling around the map, super. Now this is a pretty fast crawling speed, extremely fast because it's just as fast as it is to walk. And we can also jump as well, which is a bit daft. So let's see if we can tie these down a bit. We go back into the script and we can just change the properties of the humanoid. So we use this variable we just created. And then we need to say humanoid.walkspeed and we'll set that to eight. I think 16 is the standard, so it's only gonna be half as fast. And then we want to change the jump power as well. And we'll set that to zero. So now, when the player crouches, they're gonna slow down a lot and they're not gonna be able to jump anymore. That's much more reasonable. But what if the player wants to get out of crouch? Well, I've hit control again, nothing's gonna happen. In fact, you can even see the, uh, the animation is trying to restart because we haven't set any way for the animation to actually stop. So if we also want to disable it, the best thing to do would probably be to add a variable. So we can create this one here called local is crawling okay initially that's going to be set to false because the player isn't crawling but then once they press the control key we want to check its current state so we can say if is crawling equals equals false then we want them to crawl don't we but else if they're they are crawling then we're going to want to stop crawling so we can call stop on the animation and instead of saying equals equals false, we can simply say is if not is crawling. So it'll be the inverse of that. And then just as we start to play, we need to change the value of this. So we're gonna say is crawling equals true. So now as soon as this runs, it's gonna be set to true. And so the next time they press the control key, well, it's this is gonna be true. And so instead it's gonna run this else and then it's gonna stop the animation. After that, we just need to reset these humanoid properties back. So let's try setting the walk speed to 16 and the jump power back to 50. And finally, we want to set is crawling back to false. So is crawling equals false. Let's give that a test. Now I can hit the control key to crawl. And when I press it again, I'm back walking again. I can go up and down through an arrow gap and back up again and jumping. But there is one issue with this, which is if I'm not actually moving, well, it's always gonna play that animation, which looks a bit odd if I'm not going anywhere. So let's see if we can fix that one. We can actually use a handy event from the humanoid here, humanoid.running, and then we're gonna connect that to a function. And this takes a parameter of speed, okay? So let's check what the value of the speed is. So if speed is greater than zero, then we know that the player is actually trying to move. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that the crawl animation, and we can use the adjust speed, and we'll set it to play as normal. But we'll add an else. If uh, it's not greater than zero, so they're not moving anywhere, then we want the speed of this animation to be nil. Okay, we don't want to move at all. And this will only affect when our movement state changes. But what if we're just staying still to begin with and then we press control? Well, we don't want to be playing the animation straight away. So down here, after we tap the play, we're gonna set the speed to zero initially. That might seem strange, but of course, as soon as we start running, our speed will be greater than zero and this will get changed again. So let's see what this script looks like now. 
Okay, so we're being chased by Teddy right now, but we can run around the map and we can go into our crawl. We can crawl through the little gaps and we can hit control again and continue running around. Uh, and of course, if we just tap it, we won't be crawling along anymore. We'll just be perfectly still. And the good thing about this is if I just tap the button, whoop, he's coming for us. If I just tap it, he's gonna move and pause on each keyframe. So it looks quite natural if you just suddenly stop. Right then, there we have it then. A working crouch slash crawling script in only about 30 lines of code, so nice and easy. And that brings us to the end of this episode. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a bit sick of this rather basic testing map. So I think in the next episode, we're gonna have to fix it, give us something a bit more jazzy to work with and then we can dive into a bit more scripting. How about that? So if you found this helpful, then hit subscribe and you'll be ready for the next video. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.